Well, good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you all for coming out and to welcome you all to the F.A. Hayek Auditorium here at the Cato Institute. My name is Michael Tanner, and I'm a senior fellow here at the Cato Institute. Uh, but of course, I'm not the person you're really here to see. Uh, we are here, uh, actually, to talk about a new book by Kevin Williamson, The End is Near, and It's Going to be Awesome. Uh, we have Kevin, who will be talking to us a little bit and talking about his book in just a few moments. And then we will have some, uh, some commentary on that from Nick Gillespie of uh, Reason.com and Reason TV, uh, who will have a few things to, to say about it, I'm sure. You know, if you look around right now, you can see, pretty obviously, I think, that the major institutions of the modern welfare state are beginning to show their strains, let's say. Uh, after all, uh, you can look at the fact that we have right now at the federal level 126 separate federal anti-poverty programs at a cost of about $866 billion a year, and yet poverty go rates go up. We spend more every year on education more federal education programs, more federal education dollars, and test scores go nowhere. We spend more money on Social Security and Medicare as these programs careen towards bankruptcy, and yet Social Security delivers a much lower and declining rate of return to young people, leaving them on the hook for higher taxes or lower benefits in the future. Federal intervention in the health care system from Medicaid to Medicare to Obamacare is leading to higher health care costs, higher insurance premiums, more difficulty in seeing the doctor of your choice. I mean, all you have to do is look to the most recent scandals we're suffering right here, the investigation of journalists, the Benghazi debacle, the uh, IRS harassment of conservative groups. And if you take the Obama administration at its word uh, for everything, it's to assume that every official administration has been telling the truth all along, you have to come to the conclusion that the CIA, the State Department, the IRS, the Justice Department, and a host of other federal organizations are utterly incompetent. That, uh, that the best news, the good news, is that most of the federal government is incapable of organizing a two-car funeral. But Kevin will actually tell us this is really good news because we're going broke at the same time. I mean, the fact is that uh, this country, we talk about facing a $16.7 trillion national debt right now, uh, which puts us uh, only in slightly better position than countries like Greece and Italy. Uh, I think we have the fourth highest uh, national debt among OECD countries. Uh, but of course, that doesn't even begin to touch the real cost that this country is facing when you get into the unfunded liabilities of programs like Social Security and Medicare. In fact, by the most optimistic forecasts, for the, if you include the unfunded liabilities of these programs, we face a real debt of somewhere around 80 trillion, that's a trillion with a T dollars, about 500 percent of GDP, and perhaps as much as 120 or 130 trillion dollars in debt, over 900 percent of GDP. Uh, even just using the regular national debt, of course, we're at 103 percent of GDP, which means we already owe more than the value of all the goods and services produced in this country over the course of a year. I mean, just figure if you, you know, looking at your credit card bills and realizing that they now add up to be more than your entire pre-tax salary. So what we're going to hear today is just how close to the end those facts make us, and why they're such good news. So with that, I would like to turn it over, if I can, to Kevin Williamson, uh, who is National Review's roving correspondent. Uh, his Exchequer blog uh, deals with issues like debt, deficits, and the intersection of finance and politics. I also have to say that he is a frequent editor of my own column for National Review Online, uh, which means whenever I am insufficiently snarky, I can expect him to add additional snark to my columns, uh, which is something badly in need uh, today in political punditry. 
Uh, he has a long and distinguished journalism career. He actually started at the Bombay-based Indian Express newspaper group. Uh, he's 15 years in the newspaper business in Texas, Pennsylvania, Colorado. Uh, he's an old-fashioned newspaper man. And uh, we're thrilled to have him here. Uh, you see him regularly on lots of television shows. Uh, he's one of the talking heads now that we no longer write newspapers. I guess that's the new way to do this. At any rate, uh, his book is The End is Near, and it's going to be awesome. And we're delighted to have you, Kevin. Thanks, Mark. Please. You know, by old-fashioned newspaper man, he means that Every newspaper I've ever worked for has been through bankruptcy. Uh, <laughs> but none of them during the time I was there. Uh, so it was nice I was able to, to avoid that. Thank you all for coming out today. Uh, I appreciate it. I know there are uh, lots of other things to do with your time and your uh, afternoons than hear about the inevitabilities of uh, politics. You know, as I get started, I noticed John Elliott's here, and I should probably go ahead and blame John uh, for this book. I was speaking at an IHS event a few years back, and I just had a sort of offhand remark at the end that um, when libertarians are asked difficult questions about social challenges, things like poverty, things like education, things like what do we do about people who are disabled and just simply can't take care of themselves, we always say, well, charity will take care of it, the free market will take care of it. And those are kind of our two answers to everything, as though those were really answers to a question. They're, they're not. And John said, well, that's really what you need to write a book about then, isn't it, what we actually go about doing. So this book, in attempt, was, uh, was in part an attempt to answer, answer John's challenge there. And I will leave it to you all to uh, decide whether that's been sufficient or not. So uh, I make the number around 140 trillion. Really, when I look at uh, the situation, I also include the uh, state and local debt and state and local unfunded liabilities as kind of the uh, aggregate national fiscal overhang, which if you wonder why we always lose the political debate, it's because we use phrases like national aggregate fiscal overhang, uh, which, which nobody gets. But, um, and most of it's not in the form of explicit debt, of course, we've got bonds at the state and local level and at the national level, they're gonna to have to be paid off one of these days, but it's mostly the liabilities associated with the entitlements and also at the state and local level with uh, pensions for uh, state employees, which turn out to be a huge, huge uh, liability that most people don't think about too much, running currently something around between three and $4 trillion in obligations for the states and cities that they have no possible way to pay or even think about paying. I saw an estimate that in 15 years, I want to say the state of Illinois' uh, pensions alone will exceed all of their expected tax revenue. So if they close down the schools, fire all the police, uh, let the highways fall apart, uh, get rid of the zoning department, which would be great, and uh, don't do anything but try to pay their pensions, they still won't be able to pay the bills. What year? Pardon me? What year? Uh, I want to say it was... 15 years hence, but that might have been two years ago I wrote that, so um, sometimes you forget. But we're not talking about things, you know, 50 years down the road or 60 years down the road. Of course, in California, you've already got city after city going bankrupt. Uh, I happened to be at the uh, city council meeting in San Bernardino when they declared bankruptcy. And if you'd been there, you'd never be so happy to see a group of people go bankrupt. They were just the worst body of elected officials I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, and, you know, that is a guy who's spent time in Pakistan. They're just, uh, they're terrible. But in the end, as, I, as I'm arguing in the book, I think this is an opportunity for us. Um, I hate to take the, you know, sort of Rahm Emanuel approach, never let a good crisis go to waste, but if you've got one coming, it pays to be prepared for it. Um, I've spoken a lot about how we go about solving social problems to student groups and young people. And I was a teacher, professor for a while. And the sort of abstract economic arguments uh, puzzle them, partly because they don't take economics anymore. And if they do take economics, they get taught uh, advanced applied math rather than, uh, than economics, which is a sort of different subject. But there are things that 
they understand. They're things that people understand. One of the visual aids I always like to use in this.